And I will sing praise with my whole being I will sing praise And I will sing praise to God my King I will sing praise I will sing praise with my whole being I will sing praise My meditation, my meditation of Him Shall be sweet because I love Him I will give my heart in celebration Sing praise to God my King, I will sing praise, and I will sing praise with my whole being, I will sing praise, I will sing, I will sing praise to God my King, I will sing praise. I will sing praise to God my King I will sing praise I will sing praise with my whole being I will sing praise Oh I will sing I will sing praise to God my King I will sing praise I will sing praise with my whole being I will sing praise my man Meditation of him shall be sweet because I love him. I will give my heart in celebration. Lift my walls on high. Make a joy. Goodbye, Bible. Goodbye. Oh, oh, oh. I stayed along the week with you, with my plan to see. And I stayed along the week with you, made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I got my mind. See my Jesus someday. Oh, I got my mind made up, and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. Oh, goodbye, world, and goodbye, world. I stand along the with you. Oh, goodbye, legacy. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Born, born again. Born, born again. Oh, thank God I'm born again. Born, born again. Thank God I'm born again. Born again. Born, born again. Thank God I'm born again. Born, born again. Thank God I'm born again. Hallelujah. Give God the praise and glory this morning. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your goodness. Hallelujah. We stand before you, O oh God, this morning. Worship and praising you, Lord Jesus. 
lifting up your holy names hallelujah thank you lord jesus for your goodness for your spirit in this place hallelujah let's sing this song this is holy Thank you. 
angels lead that Hallelujah. Let's lift up our hands by faith as we stand before the living God in prayer. And Father in heaven, we come before you in the name of Jesus. As we stand before you, we come with a heart of praise and a heart of thanksgiving. Thanking you, Father, for the gift of your only begotten Son on the cross for to redeem us from sin and death. We also thank you for the Holy Spirit who is among us this morning in this place, living in us and among us to help us, to aid us, to teach us, to guide us. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge your presence this morning. And this morning we bring in prayer leaders in the fellowship before you, Pastor Great Mitchell, Sir Joe Campbell, Alan Asia, all the area works before you, every pastor, their wives and family and congregation, every evangelist this morning especially bring before you 
uh, Pastor Gregory, Diana, Lina, Silva, Shek Yen and the family just lost their father, husband, grandpa this, just a few days ago. We pray at this time that you will comfort them in this very difficult hour and time. This morning as well, we approach you and we bring God this morning, our nation before you, our country. Continue to pray and we do thank you for all that is taking place, all that is happening. God Almighty, but continue to pray, Almighty, that your will be done in this nation, that the work of heaven, the work of Jesus, the gospel will continue to grow. More churches will continue to grow. More men of God rising up to serve you in these last days, God. God, this morning as well, we bring every family before you in prayer. We pray for your divine covering upon every family. God, in this place, protect every family. God, from the devil's attack and the devil's uh, scheme, the devil's lies. God, in Jesus' name, uh, protect all the minds and thoughts and hearts against deception from the enemy. In the name of Jesus, we also bring the new place, a place of our own, before you in prayer. And we pray that everything will run accordingly and smoothly. We do thank you for miracles that you have done for us to obtain this place, God Almighty. And we pray that, God, you will continue to grant us favor and help. This morning, as well, we bring our nation, our, the, those who are not saved before you, living in Starpark area, souls young and old god every soul that repents whether they are young and old heaven rejoices and we pray for souls supernaturally to get saved just as you did for saul on the road to damascus god almighty shining your light upon them god almighty in these last days where uh, the hearing of the ears of heart of men are hardened where the hearing of years of men and women are distracted by so many things that is taking place. We pray have mercy upon this adulterous and lost generation. Lord, speak to them. Also, those who are not here, wherever they may be this morning, we pray for them, God. God, keep them in safe uh, covering. If they are not well, heal them, O Lord God, and cause them to be well. Lord God Almighty, this morning in this place, do speak to us. Uh, your word and your will be done, accomplished in all of us uh, this morning. Uh, bless our gathering together. As your word says in the book of Hebrews, uh, do not forsake the assembling of ourselves as we see the day approaching. Yes, Jesus, you are coming back. You're coming home. You're coming to take us home. And the scripture says to us, do not forsake the assembling of ourselves. Don't, don't allow anyone to leave this gathering of ourselves. To speak to all of us always to be found together in the house of God. This morning, uh, bless this morning's service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give a big clap to the Lord. You turn around, welcome one another this morning. As we uh, uh, continue on, thank you very much, uh, musicians. Amen. So, uh, before we, uh, before I go to our message this morning, and do just want to welcome all of you for this morning's service. And I just want to just. Uh, just bring to your attention the book of Psalms 147 and um, the time that we get it together at 10.30 is so important for you and uh, 10.30 what we do is or evening service at 7 Wednesday night at 7.30 uh, is the time where we begin singing and listen to this in Psalms 147 Praise the Lord, for it is good.
to sing. How many can just say with me, it's good to sing? It is good to sing. Okay, one more time. It is good to sing. Praises to our God, verse 1. For it is pleasant. Praise is beautiful. Every time we come together, this mouth of us, as we sing, be it hymns, be it uh, spiritual songs, um, it is to the ears of God pleasant, beautiful. Okay, to the ears of your God. And then it goes on, if we can go back to read the whole chapter, it goes on to speak with seven, sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praises on the harp to our God. We don't have harp here, we got drums, we got guitar, keyboard. But anyway, sing praises to Him. And then begin to speak about who He, who he is, what He does. Covers the earth, the heavens with clouds. He prepared rain for the earth for you when you need rain to rain upon your dry ground. He makes grass to grow on the mountains. He gives. Okay. And then verse 12 Praise the Lord. Praise your God. Then he said, For he has strengthened, he has blessed, he makes. He sends, he gives in verse 16. He scatters, he sends again, he causes. And he ends, he prays the Lord. So every time you come together at, at the time of singing, it really encourage you, don't let yourself um, or anything distract you. It's a time to sing, it's a time to even the scriptures say, shout unto him. And let your voice go to him. Don't let tiredness, don't let uh, crisis, problems, things that are happening to you to stop you from giving your voice. That, that voice of singing that God considers so beautiful, pleasant to the ears of God to ever uh, prevent you from uh, doing this. Because at the end of the day, okay, it, is a, it is good. Good for all things. Good in everything. It is good, both sides of it, to God and to you. Okay, so it just says, um, this has been brought to my attention, to my thoughts this morning. So I do encourage you uh, to just let it out. Amen. Okay. So, the other thing that I want to say is uh, I've sent something to the WhatsApp group about drinking. And I do encourage you to, to listen to it. It's from a neuroscientist. Uh, I'm not sure he's a Christian or not a Christian, but he's a neuroscientist. And he talks about alcohol. How alcohol passes through into your brain. Okay. So there are, there are things that your brain will prevent it from passing through. Okay. So certain things that are harmful to the brain, uh, or your brain has that thing to prevent it from passing through into your brain. But the substance of alcohol uh, you drink, it just goes right into your brain. And when it goes right into your brain, um, it talks about its calories. That's why when people drink, they become more energetic in a way. It's calories, but it speaks about empty calories. It doesn't profit those who drink. So it passes down into your brain and uh, it messes up your brain. Okay. So, um, uh, listen to it. Okay. It's from a neuroscientist. He talks about what it does to a person. Stay away from alcohol. And the Bible so clearly speaks about it. 
uh, strong drink is a mocker. Wine um, uh, turns you into a turns you into someone else. It mocks you, and uh, that's why the Bible uh, warns us about uh, that. So uh, let's go before God this morning with our giving and thank you for your attention. And let's bow our heads in prayer. And Sabri, could you pray for the offering? Amen. So we are going to turn to the book of Mark 4. Uh, 35 to 41 Mark chapter <clears throat> 4 35 to 41 and um, if you can I'd like you to stand with me and uh, we begin to read this I read 35 you read 36 and then we're going to go to 41 uh, on the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. Verse 36. And a great windstorm, okay, a mega windstorm, arose, waves beat unto the boat, so that he was already feeling, verse 38. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm, verse 40. And they fear exceedingly, say to one another, Who can this be, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Thank you for your word this morning, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. The title of this message is uh, Jesus in the Boat. But uh, you may not see him. We were at the a memorial service of Evangelist Mark uh, Daniel on Thursday. And as you know, uh, it was uh, news shocking to all of us uh, to hear that uh, he had a, he went for angiogram and then uh, in that angiogram, the later news is that he he went on to be with the Lord. He had a heart attack and went on to do with the Lord. And, and uh, on Thursday was the uh, memorial service whereby uh, they call it uh, the celebration of life. Okay. So um, they call this a celebration of life and um, it's in a way to celebrate in a sense the life that uh, Evangelist Mark has uh, shown and has blessed us with. And if you, were, if you are there, it was also a time of great grief and great mourning. Okay, especially for Diana, wife, and, and uh, Lena, and all of them. But uh, it was also a time of, um, Mark is only 62. Okay. And um, he looks healthy as you all see him fit, you know. Kind of hard to make sense of it all, you know. Um, suddenly happened. But also to accept the fact that uh, this is part of life, death. Okay, death, according to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, time to born and the time to die. OK? 
Okay. So this is part of life and and we have to accept it. Testimonies were given and then um, tears were shed and then after that to accept the fact that uh, to live is Christ, to die is gain and then we have to go on in life. Okay. A time to be born, a time to die. Many things we don't really understand. But this is part of uh, living in this uh, world. Now, in our text here, we have a very powerful story. I don't really normally write my sermon like this, okay? Usually, it's in my iPad. I do my sermon in my um, I write, then I transfer it into my computer, download, sync it into my iPad, and then from it I begin to do my sermon. But this sermon is, is, is this. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, this is worse than a doctor's writing. I myself so find it hard to read what I wrote. Okay. But uh, uh, here in this. Uh, next year, we have a very powerful story of Jesus and also the disciples in the boat. Um, there is Jesus and the disciples on land. There is Jesus and the disciples um, on the, in the mountain. There is Jesus and the disciples on the seashore. There is Jesus and the disciples in the garden. Okay, so Jesus is like, he's with the disciples in many, many different locations and places, but here we have Jesus and the disciples in the boat. Each location and each place that he is in, it's, it, it, it has his powerful lessons to life and teachings to life. And uh, here, uh, two found here is the story of Jesus and the disciples in the boat. Okay? This part of disciples with Jesus in the boat is found in all four gospel. Okay, Mark, Matthew, John, Luke. The story is all found in all four of the gospel, and this tells us how 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 important this story is and uh, God wants us to uh, begin to uh, uh, learn from this story. Now compared to those uh, or compared to the seashore and compared to the land, compared to the mountain top, compared to the garden, it is the sea is in the boat that they cross over. Okay. Crossing over is not something that is unusual um, in stories that are found in the Bible. Um, the Red Sea, they cross over on dry land to the other side. And then we have Joshua, whereby the Jordan River begins to divide it and the children of Israel begin to cross over. So this disciples in the boat with Jesus, okay, so we find that uh, this is where they begin to experience this crossing over thing to the other side. Okay. So it is in the boat, it's in the sea that takes them from point A to point B. Right? On the other side, that is chapter 5, uh, Jesus is going to do something there. Uh, he's going to restore, he's going to raise to date, to life a dead child. He's going to let his power flow out from him to a woman who is going through issues with the blood for 12 years okay 
So he's going to restore the life of a, of a boy, of a young boy who's been uh, possessed by close to 2,000 demons living inside him. And at the end of the day, bring him to stability and clear thinking and to sound mind. Okay. And uh, Jairus' daughter raised to life from death. So, on the other side, to cross over, it is like this disciples is going to experience a, 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 new, a new experience. You know, another demonstration of the power of Christ to do the impossible, to restore, to raise to life, to heal. It's in the boat that took them across, cross over to that part of the land which uh, Christ or the Father wants them to see and experience. On land in the garden, on land, on top of a mountain, on seashore, on each has its goal. Each has its purposes, but it is the crossing over. And as we see this crossing over Christian, this journey, we find that it involved being in the boat. Okay. The gift to allow them to experience uh, what Christ wants them to see and their faith begin to grow and um, uh, Christ put them into a boat to take them across uh, to this to that land verse 35 of Mark 4 he said to them let us cross over to the other side But as we begin to learn from this text here that in this crossing over in the boat, it's kind of, you know, it's not, it's not so smooth. Okay? It's, not, it's not such a smooth journey as, uh, as we see in this story. Scripture says to us that in verse 37, a great windstorm. The word great is the word mega. It's where you get the mega storm, mega sails, mega, you know. The word mega is great windstorm. This mega windstorm begin to come upon them. Okay. And this Great windstorm begin to fill their boats with water. And this great storm, other translation says, begin to swarm the boat with waves. Uh, remember there was one time we were in a, in a ship or boat, not a big boat, but the kind that sits like maybe seven of us and the waves was just, you know, you were, you, uh, we were holding as tight as possible to the ropes that was there. The waves was just hitting you, hitting the boat. And I'm thinking to myself, you know what, um, with, the, with the way the boat hit the boat, with the way the wave hit the boat, this boat is going to break apart. You know, it's like, pum, pum. it's like, you know, is like hitting your boat with all the strength and might. It's just water, but it's so powerful that you you sitting there, the boat will go like that, go like that, go like that. And I'm thinking, wow, oh, would this boat break apart? But it didn't break apart. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. It didn't break apart. Other 
translation used windstorm breaking into the boat. I'm reminded as we begin to read this about the Apostle Paul in the book of Acts while he was taken as prisoner to Rome. And when he was taken prisoner to Rome, there's this great hurricane, Eurogliden, begin to come upon the boat that Paul uh, was in. You know the story, an angel came, spoke to Paul, all will be well. And though the boat break apart, but all went well. What I would say to you that uh, part of journey which involve the in the boat time. It's not an always uh, kind of period of time one will be in the boat, but part of the journey whereby you will be in the land, in the seashore, the mountain, you know, um, the garden and, and all that, but part of the journey that, that, that consists of the Christian journey is, is this part whereby uh, Jesus will say to you, let us go into the boat or let us cross over the other side. Let's get into the boat. And uh, part of it will be involving that part which uh, he kind of allow us to go through the windstorm of life. This great windstorm. And so great is this windstorm that um, you look at it, you look at what is happening, you may feel the danger of you sinking. The title of this message is Jesus is in the boat, but you don't see him. But part of it shall involve the boat ride. It's not a roller coaster. Roller coaster has its, has its excitement and, and it's fun. Okay. The first time I sat in, I was afraid. But after coming down, I say I want to go up again. Okay, because it's fun and exciting. Okay. But this one is, is not so. Okay. Whereby the forces of life uh, is thrown at you. Okay. And, and one can end up this morning confused. And up, you know, it's like, uh, be honest with you, on that Thursday night, me and Pastor Allen, we were standing there, and um, we were at the, another side of the place watching in the, the memorial service. It's about to end. They were wish, we are paying their last respect, and uh, me and Pastor Allen, we just stood there and... Um, he was shedding his tears and I was shedding my tears and both of us was not, you know, we were, we were happy for, for Evangelist Mark because he, 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 he gave his life to Christ, he served Christ and, um, but we were just standing there and, and, um, and he was using his handkerchief. I don't have a handkerchief, I don't use handkerchief. I just use my hands and just wipe away whatever tears that that flows out from my eyes and he uses his handkerchief but it's kind of like, you know, we stand there and, and uh, it's like, why, you know, it's like to try to make some sense of what is happening. Yeah. Here, as they were in the boat, the wind came and when it happened, they were sinking about the sink and they were trying, I believe, to make some sense of, of it because this is confusing firstly because the this the this jesus who said let us go you know it's jesus jesus is the one that say hey come guys let's get in the boat let's cross over jesus is the one that says let's cross over it's not matthew says it not mark says it not john says it not judas says it none of these disciples say anything about crossing over and get into the boat it's Jesus. Jesus says, let's, let us go. Let's cross over. Okay. And if it's Jesus' idea, many times we think that, you know, if Jesus is the one that gave this word and this 
this direction, everything should be fine. Correct? Everything should be well. But everything will be well. We say amen. But in that part of the journey, we must understand that uh, in this world we are living in, okay, whereby the God of this world is the devil, and we still live in the flesh. There's material things, the worldly things all around us. That uh, in this journey, there's going to be times whereby there is this mega thing okay, coming against you. But so crucial is this story. Um, that we need to understand and that is Jesus in the boat but at times you don't see him yeah. here Jesus was down sleeping at, in, 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 in down, down there he was sleeping Jesus was not up with them when they were going through what they were going through. But Jesus was there. Amen. So if you're going through some mega things in your life, I just want you to know Jesus is there. Amen. You may not see him. But he's in the boat. Okay? You may not see him, but he's in the boat. In the book of First Timothy, chapter 1, uh, verse 17. Paul described God this way in verse 17. Now do the king eternal, immortal, means cannot die, and then say invisible. To God, who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. To the king eternal, this king is immortal, he never dies, he lives on and on, and then the scripture says he's invisible. He's there, but he's, he's not there. This, the book of Esther, he's there, but it seems that he's not there, but he's there, okay, working behind the scene. He's there. But there's not one single word of the word Lord God mentioned in that book, in the book of Esther. But he's there. Okay. Also, it's in the story of the book of Ruth. It looks like he's not there. But he's there. Okay. He's there moving, he's there working. The story of Joseph. It looks like he's not there, but he's there. There'll be times when, in times when your life looks like it's going to sink into the bottom of the sea. All you see is waves and all you see is storms. But take heart this morning that he's there. Amen. Though you don't see him to be there. Now, what do you do when in such a time? What do you do when you are facing times when you know the waves of the sea is coming against you? You didn't do anything wrong. You were obedient, just like these disciples. They did not say to Jesus, Jesus, you know, no, oh, Jesus, no. I'm not we're not gonna obey you, you know, Jesus. I'm not gonna go with what you tell. Let us go over the other side. No, we just stay back, you know. They didn't obey, disobey, they were obedient. They went in just as Jesus asked them. They never sinned. Okay. But yet, we find them in such a situation. What do you do when you are going through such a time? And what they need to do and what you need to do is to stand on what he has said to you. In verse 35 of Mark 4, this is what he has earlier said to them. What have Jesus earlier said to you? Verse 
What has he spoken to you before the journey? Before you were in the boat, before you were sailing the sea, what has he spoken to you? Because here, before they got into the boat, Jesus says to them, let us go. Let us cross over the other side. It is let us. We must put this in our heart. Okay? Whenever you are in a boat journey, because in the boat journey, you never know when the storm's going to come. Okay? Must put that in our heart. It is us. It is let us. Jesus did not say, let you go. Okay, let all 12 of you get in the boat and go. But he says, let us go. It is with me, with you, with you, with me. It's never a lone ranger journey. Okay, it's never for you and I, okay, an independent all by yourself, going through what you're going through in your office, going through what you're going through in your family's matter, going through what you're going through. Okay. In what you're going through. It's never you, though he don't see him, like the disciples didn't see him. But it's never uh, you, husband and wife, just husband and wife, or father and mother and two children. It's not just father and mother and two children, but plus one. Okay. It's never the tree that went into the burning fire and later they saw, hey, there's one more there. A fourth person is there. That looks like the son of God. Son of man, son of God. There's always this one plus you, one plus your family, one plus your tree or, or what. When he say, let us go over the other side. Yesterday we uh, were in a house meeting and and uh, we turn to the book of Matthew chapter 17. And I ask um, some to turn to Matthew 17, 22. Or is it 22, 21? And ask, is it in your Bible, the scripture? And because that scripture, Matthew 17, 21, is not in some of the Bibles. You got Matthew 17, 20, and then it jumps to 22. But where in the world is 21? Okay, so if you have a Bible that does not have the 21 there, I suggest you the Bunkusit. You know, don't, don't read it. Don't turn to it because if that verse is not there, <laughs> I'm thinking, okay, you know, there are many verses that would not be there. But New King NIV would not have that verse that's so important except you pray and fast. That was not there. This kind will not come out except you pray and fast. It was taken out from that in some translation. But what I want to say to you is, we were talking about how dare they begin to take out God's word from, from His Holy Bible. Okay? Bible says that if you add unto it and if you take out from it, minus it, God will judge you. But what I want to say to you is those simple words of Jesus Christ, He says to us, let us let us go over 
the other side his words are final and true and no windstorm in no matter how mega that windstorm is if he say let us let us means he will go with them and that he will be with them and they will reach where he says he's going to go every word of jesus jesus says in john 6 6 the words that i speak to you the words that i speak to you they are life they are spirit and life we have to get it in our heart it is let us not let you alone okay this him he lives The, the, the lyrics of it, he walks with me, huh? he talks to me alongside narrow path, especially alongside very narrow path. He walks with you, he talks with you alongside narrow path. And if there's anything that we need to stand upon is to stand upon this very simple truth that is Jesus is still in the boat though you don't see him okay Jesus is the other person who is with you in your journey especially when your journey involves you being in the boat we say amen now, I want to look at wake Jesus up with the right words. Here in our text here, we find that they went and wake Jesus up. Okay. Mark chapter 4. And this is what they say to Jesus. Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? They went to Jesus and they woke him up. And when they opened their mouth, they say, Don't you care for us? Uh, we are dying, you know. What a what a way to, you know, uh, what a way to. To, to what words to say to Jesus that Jesus doesn't care for them. But anyway, they came to Jesus, they opened their mouth, and this is what they say to Jesus. But despite what they say to Jesus, Jesus, uh, great in mercy, stood up, spoke to the wind, calmed the sea, and um, what happened is that everything was calm here we see the mercy of Jesus despite their lack of faith now by this time they they should have kind of known because of the experience in chapter 2 chapter 3 and even chapter 4 they should have by right now known that when Jesus is with you in your boat, everything will be, everything will be all right. Everything will be fine. Jesus, in Mark chapter one, he healed Peter's mother-in-law who was sick. He cast out an unclean spirit in chapter one. He cleansed a leper right before their eyes. Leprosy. Okay. Right before instant probably healing. Every, the skin all came back to be like the skin of a baby. Right before their eyes. In chapter 2, Jesus heals a paralytic. Okay. Who could not walk, a paralyzed man. Chapter 3, there was a healing stretch out your hand 
there was healing, 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 cleansing, healing, casting out demons. And this, this disciples have uh, has seen it with their own eyes. But instead of trusting and and maybe instead of challenging the wind and say to the wind, wind, you know what? Jesus is with us, wind. You know. And and how dare you challenge us? Or instead going to Jesus, which is the right thing to do, which they went. They should have went to Jesus with the right words. But they went with the wrong words to Jesus. Nevertheless, the mercy of Christ, he woke up and calmed the sea for them. But they should have approached him with the right words. This is so important. On Friday night, we were here praying and after that, I think, and after that, I felt the Spirit of God begin to pray, to pray for one another that whenever we speak, whenever words comes up from our mouth, okay, it be words that is full of, full of the Holy Spirit, full of grace, full of our tone, okay, the tone that we speak, the way that the words that with the attitude that is in our words flows with love and life. Here they came to Jesus and 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 the and the first thing they say is, you don't, do you not care that we are dying, teacher? And Jesus is trying to allow us to see that your words and my words in our approach to God is, is, is important. Philippians chapter 4, if you could turn with me. We have that very... Uh, important scripture, powerful in his ways. Be anxious for nothing. That word anxious for nothing is implies that you're going through something that you are going to cause you anxiousness, but says don't be anxious for anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. The approach is supposed to be, Lord, we thank you, Lord. Lord, Lord, we thank you that you you are you are God, you are, you know, you are a healer. You Lord, we are going through this, Lord, you know. And verse 6 says, with thanksgiving, the story of Daniel chapter 6. And he heard that there's a law that been passed that says that who does not bow down to the golden image will be thrown into the lion's den. The Bible says, Daniel 6.10, that Daniel went home. He opened the windows. And then he began to knelt before God. And then with thanksgiving, he began to come before God. And, and he began to talk to God and pray to God. And he began to speak. Psalms 100, verse 1 to verse 5. It says there, Make a joyful noise to the Lord. All you land, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who, makes, who has made us, not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. But they enter in it with, with a different uh, words, 
But he'll say, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise this morning. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, his truth endures all generation. What kind of words are the right words? The kind that has words of praise and words of thanksgiving. So this morning as we begin to bring this to a close, if you are in a bodhi situation where you have been um, stormed by the windstorm of life, Okay, know that though you don't see him, amen, he's with you. And know that come before him when in crisis, when in such a situation, like, the, like Daniel came with thanksgiving unto him. Amen. I want every head bow, every eyes close. And, and also I want you to stand to your feet, amen. And just lift up your hands and I desire praise from you, church. Who can he receive praise from except from you? He cannot get it from the world. The world give it to Beyonce, Rihanna, Sam Smith. The world give their praise to Lionel Messi, Ronaldo. The world give their praise to Bill Gates. And the world give it to the world. But praise comes from God's people. And this morning, hallelujah. God, this morning, hallelujah. Shiki Yanda Sanda sing. Let's praise His admiration. Let's go before him this morning with praise and admiration. And as the scriptures say, 147, to sing unto him, for he is good. Shikiyanda karaba ba 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 sanda. Oh yes, this morning. For eternity, for eternity. 
or doubting you in times or at times when we don't see you but you're always there in the boat with us and for this dear Jesus we're so grateful knowing that just as you were there with Melshach Abednego and Shadrach you will always be with us in the storms of life and because you are there with us everything will be fine amen everything will be all right and we thank you in jesus christ's name we pray amen let's give a big clap to the lord god bless all of you amen <laughs>